Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going vlogging. Uh, today is Warhammer Fest, it is Sunday the 13th of uh, May and uh, I'm just waiting on my transport uh, to come pick me up. That's Rich and Dave from Floorhammer Podcast and we're going up to Fest at the Rico Arena this morning. It is really early, I need a Red Bull and uh, we'll be on our way. Hopefully I'll be recording a little bit more this time than I did last time as I kind of just forgot and just took lots of pictures instead and what I'm hoping for is that social media hasn't spoiled the event already and that there is more to come and it isn't all about Titanicus and everything that we've already seen so far I'm hoping that there's more to come and that the Sunday goers haven't just had the event kind of spoiled by all the social media coverage yesterday so let's hope there's something new fingers crossed and sporting some new merch might get to see some people. So the first thing we did then when we got there was straight into the main exhibition hall. Now this is where the Warhammer sales and the GT finals were taking place. A few other bits and pieces in the background as well. There was this American company trying to sell their gaming tables. Uh, there was some stuff on uh, Warhammer gaming, so PC and console gaming that was all coming along as well. But we had a sort of a little wander around the sales area in case we wanted to sort of pick up anything that was exciting. Then we can dump it in the car so we didn't have to carry it around for the rest of the day. So we did actually pick up a few t-shirts and stuff and uh, while we were there sort of spotting on Warhammer TV so we can see Kerry and uh, Nick Bates there uh, just sort of commentating on one of the games and just for all those tabletop tactics fans we did spot Spider aka Lawrence uh, surrounded by people <laughs> trying to watch him play his game I really felt sorry for the guys he was trying to concentrate on you know winning a GT and he just had an awful lot of uh, fans uh, around him at the time. I guess that's part of the uh, celebrity status of tabletop tactics. So then we moved into the Golden Demon area. So on the top floor of the arena, so it was split into three. So you had the ground, ground floor with all the arena area there, the middle floor with all the seminar stuff, and the top floor had Golden Demon and the studio stuff. So taking a few pictures of some of the you know superb entries really puts a lot of my painting to shame, I think. Uh, the level of effort that people go to for the Slayer Sword lots of uh, really cool models. We sort of wandered around, picked out a few that I thought were quite interesting and quite cool. I didn't see all of them because people were still registering and entering as they went. These were the guys that got in there pretty early and got their stuff on display. Lots of plinths once again. It seems to be, you know, you can't win a golden demon without a plinth and a brass plaque indicating some wacky name or title of your entry. But there was some really, really cool stuff in there as always. Lots of uh, inspiration for future projects. Two of my favourite categories are the Jewel, which you can see on the screen now, a couple of entries from there. I find that really, really good. As well as the Open category, which is the only one that Warhammer staff can actually enter. So you do see some crazy conversions on there, some really wacky ideas because, you know, they are the people that create the product, they get their discount, they can uh, bits box rummage to their hearts galore. And uh, you, you do get some really cool entries in the open category from those uh, staff entries. But some, yeah, just in general, some really high quality stuff. The Young Bloods category, I still question whether 13, 14 year olds are uh, really painting these models, but some of the standard is just crazy. There's a few free hat, lots of freehand nights going on. Uh, some really cool stuff going on. You know, the people, people go crazy on those big open panels on nights and stuff, and it just, it's just phenomenal levels of detail. It is, it's, it's pure artwork. It's, it's not miniature stuff. It's not gaming stuff. It is just utter artwork. So as we kind of wrapped up and finished our wandering around the Golden Demon entries, it was kind of pushing towards our first seminar at 11 o'clock. So uh, a couple of us uh, stepped outside and sort of had a little conversation about what we'd managed to see so far. So we kind of split into two little groups because two of the guys that we were with actually have a big Age of Sigmar focus, whereas the other three of us are more 40k kind of uh, fanboys so we kind of split up and uh, those guys headed to one seminar and we headed to uh, some different ones so there's a couple of really cool entries here for the Necromunda entries and then there was a Blood Bowl entry I think that was catching a few people's eyes it's just coming up on screen now and that is yeah the purple helmets now genius 
Yeah, I, th I think so, yeah. I think they got away with that just about right. All right, so I'm with uh, Dave and Glenn, and we are about a third of the way through uh, Warhammer Fest 2018. What do you think so far, Dave? We're about a third of the way through. What have you seen? Um, I think it's been a fantastic event, to be honest. We've had some really good conversations with people from the design team, um, especially some of the miniatures painter, painters that did the Iden F Deep Kid, because um, mainly I'm an Age Sigma player, um, and it was really interesting to find out about the theories that he had behind that army. Um, also, we're looking at doing scenery for a board that we're using at, at home. So we were talking to some of the board designers for Warhammer World and looking at the theories that they had um, kind of behind that and how they went about coming up with their ideas and, and the sort of materials that they used that were easy to get hold of and kind of where they went beyond going just through your stock Games Workshop stuff because Age of Sigma at the moment doesn't have a lot of uh, terrain unlike 40k so any good tips and tricks you picked up so far uh yeah using xpvc for roads for like cobble like pebble sort of slate roads um, and just going to um, supermarkets like sainsbury's and grabbing them because they tend to chuck out signs made of that obviously all legal of course um, but of course. <laughs> but yeah just using those sort of materials and and in, how to imprint it and, and kind of work with that there's a different kind of material to use outside of just buying off the shelf like some ruins really so that's, nice that's really nice yeah. like it very nice guy. so Glenn, then this is your first ever Warhammer Fest. My first How's ever it going? Warhammer Fest. It's been really excellent actually. So I've been going around with Dave to so share a lot of his experiences. And just to elaborate on that Deep King piece a little bit more, it's really interesting talking to the guy who's painted that and how does he go from uh, the grey stock colour to producing this absolute canvas of amazing models. Uh, and I was chatting to him and he's been down to an actual aquarium in Birmingham and you know he's looked at the seabed and sort of said how do these colours tie together because you're looking at something that's a big array of colours and they tie together in a very natural way and how do you translate that to the miniatures you know he's gone away and taken that um, and when you look at the range there there's very subtle things and tips he said if you look at the cloak of this miniature and then look at one of the spot colours on this miniature or the howder on the turtle they're just an invert of the two colours and little things like that have just tied that whole range together awesome uh I also appreciate the merch. Oh, the and merch. so, yeah, unfortunately, these aren't quite for sale yet. <laughs> this is very much staff only, but watch, watch this space. And watch you met, you met Duncan? So, I don't, I don't keep, yeah, carrying on the painting thing when I met Duncan, uh, and it was interesting talking to him because I'm an uh, Age of Sigmar player and I've been doing that for uh, three, four, five years after getting back into hobby since uh, being a little kid. And his videos were just a really big confidence boost for me to watch that and think, okay, I can achieve that and I can put miniatures on the table I'm happy to play with. Uh, and I was just related relayed that back to him and he was uh, just telling us like you know he's had people he plays with in his personal time that had no confidence in painting and they watched his videos and now he looked at their stuff and go oh they're better than mine so yeah it was really interesting and he managed to give us a couple of tips of the day in person as well he was telling live about tips live tips of the day about cloaks and stuff but it's just a great opportunity to access all these people and, and see how it's done awesome stuff and uh, <laughs> we're gonna be heading on for a bit of uh, first seminar in 20 minutes and then on which one are you guys going to? Are you going to the Sigma one? We're going to scenery. Oh, yeah, scenery first. Yeah. Yeah, no, scenery and uh, I'm going to the what one have I got here? The seminar room two, which I think is uh, Forge World upcoming stuff, which I'm you know I'm a big fan of the Heresy era, so we're going to be going to do that. Have a bit of lunch, and then we're on for some more seminars yeah. after lunch. Yeah. And then we're going to go and check out the Titanica stuff. I am sure. So at this point then we headed up to the Forge World seminar hosted by Tony Cottrell hoping that he didn't put his uh, foot in his mouth like he did earlier in the year. So we did start off on a bit of fantasy stuff and then moved swiftly on so it's a brand new uh, dragon thing and uh, it's not his focus, his focus is on the heresy stuff but we started off with Adeptus, Custode, Adeptus Custodes and various bits and pieces there so a brand new book is coming uh, with all the rules for Forge World's cool stuff to be used in 30k and 40k so we're going to finally get to use some of those uh, superb forge world kits in the 40k arena also touched on a brand new dreadnought drop pod admittedly drop pods pretty suck in 8th edition as there's far far better ways to deliver your troops onto the battlefield uh, a few other bits and pieces alpha legion doors you know other bits very very minor products some new praetors nothing you know nothing leaping out uh, then the Alpharius reveal, obviously that's been floating around far too long. We've seen this all over social media for at least a good month now. Everyone, everyone is aware that Alpharius is the next 30k Primark, so nothing super exciting. Then uh, we had a Dark Mechanicus character, a uh, big super, sort of the nemesis version of uh, Belisarius Cowell, really. Uh, very, very creepy looking. 
and yeah, another bit more of the character series, Dark Mechanicus kind of related. Then we had some nice new tanks, very retro painted style on this one, I think. That blue and yellow is a bit retro. Then we had uh, some more on the old school speeders. Another new knight that looks uh, pretty menacing. Those, those weapons on that just look ridiculous. Then we have the giant dildo tank. I mean, the giant Termina Exterminatus uh, Ordinatus Mole. Uh, I think that is going to be a massive kit, very similar to the Ordinatus truck that we already have. That is just uh, ridiculous, but looking forward to that. Then we had some conversation on Malevolence. The uh, final, you know, well, they're not the final, but the next book in the Horus Heresy series, that big black hardback book. So we have White Scars, we have Blood Angels, and then we have uh, some demon stuff going on in this as well. So, uh, yeah, this is all going to cover lots of, uh, is it Chondax? Yeah, Chondax and Cygnus. So basically where the Blood Angels got, you know, royally screwed over during the Heresy and never really got back to Terra. So that was it. It was pretty disappointing. So we went back to the studio area then. So we'd already covered the Golden Demon, which was one half of the studio. But the main part of that hall was covered with people from Warhammer TV, studio painting teams, uh, boards. Look at this board with this craft Warlord Titan all over it. Utterly amazing. But the scenery designers, the board designers were on hand to have a conversation about how they got these fabulous looking boards. So in fact that Warlord Titan wasn't cast up specially to be destroyed, it's all sort of return parts and stuff from customers that had miscasts or whatever. This Deepkin board probably was my favourite out of the whole lot. It was just, just so thematic and so cool to look, so many little weird areas of detail in there. And obviously being the studio area, our Lord and Saviour Duncan Rhodes was on hand. He was giving live hobby tips, taking lots of selfies, lots of pictures with his people. Obviously, cosplay was a big thing. There was quite a few Imperial Guardsmen, some Chaos Space Marines floating around, uh, a Lord Commissar floating around, lots of people. But yeah, live hobby tips with Duncan actually had a, quite a big queue. So it was 15 to 20 people in a queue almost all the time. But live hobby tips and then the fuel of Duncan is clearly tea and biscuits. This seems to be his, his method of getting through the day. Tea and biscuits, that seems like a good idea to me. But yeah, live tips with him was, was pretty good. Everyone had some really good questions. And one of the big secrets about his, when he's doing his hobby tips on uh, YouTube, that when he says, yep, go away and leave this to dry, they are secretly using a hairdryer. Let that be a secret tip for you. So we've got lots more pictures in the miniature halls. Lots of new stuff coming up. Lots of nice little dioramas done by the studio team. And lots of staffers. This this was really cool. This little Necromunda scene. I've... So much little detail in there, so many kits and batches and everything else. And then you can wander around sort of the Forge World area and then you see Alpharius, um, fully painted up by the Forge World studio. Looks pretty good when those guys paint it and, and all these other, all the, all the Forge World painting is very different to studio painting. They are going far more for realism compared to the studio which goes for, it's not cartoony but it's a bit more, you know, 40k fiction style whereas the the Forge World guys really, really focus on realistic looking pieces of armour and tanks. Uh, on the Saturday, there was the Necron Construct was revealed. This was the, the, on Sunday they actually had it in the cage or in the in the uh, display cabinets. It's massive. Um, while we're wandering around then, also some of the other just, just cool models in general. So Atos here, the Forge World uh, Super Chicken, really beautifully painted. I've got one on my desk and I thought I'd take a couple of pictures for reference and great unclean ones and so on. I think these, these models have been floating around from the studio for quite some time. Then we move into the the Adeptus Titanicus. So this is basically a remastered game from a long, long time ago. So I've got lots of pictures of the Titanicus uh, sort of demo game or demo board. So you can see here, it's not the old six millimeter scale. These are pretty big. They're based on Forge World tiles here, but I suspect most people won't be going for those because those tiles would be pretty expensive. So the game is going to consist uh, of a number of different releases. Uh, and you can see there just the Reaver Titan for scale actually. Um, so you're going to have Warlords, uh, Knights, Warhounds and Reavers in the game. They don't think they are going to go anything bigger than a Warlord. So we're not going to see Imperators or anything like that. I think someone said that the scale of the Imperator to this uh, this scale would actually be the size of a Warlord in 28mm, so completely unrealistic. 
But lots of cool pictures of painted Titanicus models. The Titanicus kits are going to be in plastic. So you'll have a box set for the Warlord, you'll have a box set containing three knights, and then you'll have box sets for the smaller um, knights as well. I expect a Warhound might come in a box of two. But the detail on these really, really does mimic their larger brethren. And you can see here the guys starting to, to paint up. So you can see what they start with and move on. And here's a shot of the plastic sprues. I think there's plenty of those floating around on social media as well. That is uh, an awful picture. Apologies for that. And uh, that's a bit better. We've got the uh, flash sorted out there. These uh, glass cabinets are a pain to take pictures through. But you can see all the terrain kits and stuff that are going to come in the box set. And you can buy them separately. Fully modular. And the Grand Master Edition is going to be the big one that will contain everything. Or you can buy it in sort of separate boxes. And they've got some of the box designs here. So, you know, you've got uh, the... Civitus Imperialis, so some sort of uh, hab block kind of stuff. Then you've got the Imperialis sector, you know, more sort of buildings. Not destroyed, they all look pretty whole. And they were discussing the rules. It's going to be more about engine resource management than it is just rolling dice and shooting guns. I wanted to cover a couple of things that were interesting. So the Golden Demon winner here, you can see the model here is just utterly packed with detail. I think that was actually a really, really worthy winner. Um, I got to see that in the flesh and it's just... It's just mind-boggling what people will do to, to enter these competitions. It's utterly crazy, and congratulations to him. But the big draw from the Grand uh, from the grand Tournament was look who won it. It is an army faction without a codex. It is Orcs. Now, if you follow the Warhammer community site on Facebook and all the rest of it, you see a lot of people whinging about where are Orcs and where where's their codex. They don't need one. They, are, they were arguably a very index-strong force. This guy took complete advantage of that. Basically swamped all the objectives, denied everyone because he had 300 boys all over everything. Didn't take very many first bloods, didn't kill very many enemies. Just sat on the objectives for five turns and won the game. Now you might argue, is that a very orky way to play? Uh, no, it's not. But it's a very tournament way to play against very uh, codex strong, meta bashed, scripted lists that have been tried and tested all over the place, thinking they're going to get all those re-rolls. You try and re-roll through that many boys, you're not going to win the game. So fair play to the guy that used Orc to win that and used Orc index entries to their best of their ability. Very impressed. And you compare that to people that brought six Plague Burst Crawlers and the and the Feculent Narmor tree. You know, that, that famous list that you always hear Mortarian talking about in all the background. Oh yeah, dispatch a tree and some old rotten tanks. That'll win us the battle, yeah. So you can argue uh, one way or the other. But absolutely fair play to the guy, and congratulations to the Orc faction. So that's Warhammer Fest 2018 now finished. We're kind of leaving a bit now. Um, what did you think, Mr. David Pettis? I thought it was really good. Got to meet Duncan. Got a selfie yeah. with Duncan. Fanboy moments. Touched his hands. Touched hands? Yep, I cut some locks not, of his hair off. You're not going to wash for how long now? I don't wash anyway. You don't wash anyway, you're a gamer. That's <laughs> standard, right? Yeah, sweaty pits. Yeah. Lucky pants. Good. What was your favourite thing there, Rich? Uh, speaking to the designers, they were really awesome to chat to. Give you some behind scenes looks. Yeah. Any any particular that. gaming board took your fancy? What, did, what about that Deepkin board? The Ideneth Deepkin board was sweet. Uh, highlight is definitely the small goblin in the uh, building nicking the bag of gold while all the battle's going on. You know, that's where it's at. And the one poking the spider as well. <laughs> Goblins are not ones for health and safety, Dave, you get too excited. That's uh, people we know. Yeah, some losers. Uh, <laughs> let's be honest, I think we all agreed that the Forge World reveal was not really a yeah. reveal. Mm. It was over within 10 minutes, nothing uh, that we yeah, hadn't yeah, seen yeah, before. They're, they're pro oh, wait, no. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and then 20 minutes Q&A and the fact that half the room then got up and left oh, yeah, kind was... of indicated where people felt about it. They yeah. revealed the Blood Angels and White Scars as being the next book and we sort of expected a, a Sanguinius or a, a Jagatai Khan to be revealed right at the end as the, the last slide. Even even if it was just um, some teaser artwork mm. or a concept artwork or something yeah. along those lines, there was nothing. It was a little bit of, you know, Custodes are going to get a full book, yep. uh, Sister's going to get a full book and the Grey Knights, Knights. are all going to be tied into that and the Grey Knights, yeah. But other than that, yeah, it wasn't wasn't the greatest. But the other seminars and just talking to the designers was really cool. Yeah. The scenery guys were very good. There's this crashed Warlord Titan oh, uh, board was just awesome. Dream board, isn't it? That Deepkin board, as I said, was, was tremendous. Really, just the yeah. imagination behind it is is just where... The it, rest it, of the event was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. had a really good time. 
really, really insightful. So. Good, so we're, we're, we're about to head home and then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, put some pictures up and all that good stuff. And then we're going to be talking on the podcast, we're gonna discussing do, uh, uh, more of the same, really. At some point today uh, or tomorrow. Excellent. Yeah. What do we want to call it? Vid podcast split thing? Mashup. Mashup. That's what the kids say. Yeah. VV log. VV log. V- so to wrap this video up then, guys, I'm just going to go through some low lights, some highlights, uh, just some general opinions and thoughts as we go through uh, wrapping this up. So the first thing I didn't really cover is Age of Sigmar in Warhammer Fest. Now just before we all attended, there was a big uh, teaser reveal on YouTube and that was confirmed to be Age of Sigmar 2.0. So that's about three years old now, so they're getting a reboot. My understanding is it is coming more parallel to Warhammer 40k. So there's going to be an equivalent command point structure, uh, stratagems and all that kind of thing going to be coming to Age of Sigmar. Now I think that is a very good thing. One thing that really put me off playing Warhammer Fantasy was learning two different rule sets. I'm not, you know, I'm not the cleverest guy in the world. Trying to learn multiple game systems has never been my thing. So the whole wheeling and all that kind of mechanics that happened, all the ranking and uh, casualties and everything else that happened in Warhammer Fantasy, obviously that's gone with Age of Sigmar and it's all individual based models now. Now if it goes more parallel to 40k, which obviously has the larger player base, and Sigmar is doing so well trying to you know push the rule sets closer and closer ish together so there's enough similarity that there could be a decent crossover of player base i think is a very positive thing so uh, looking forward to seeing how that pans out let's go into the negatives then now for me only really one negative and that was the forge world reveal so normally at warmer fest there's normally some kind of you know teaser artwork or teaser um three up scale or some kind of lead into what the next Primark is going to be for the Horus Heresy um, game system. And this year there was nothing. The Forge World seminar, the new releases seminar, basically was 10 minutes long with 20 minutes Q&A. And a lot of people walked out pretty much after um, Cottrell finished his blurb. And there was a little bit of conversation around what the next guy was going to be because of the new book. You know, we've got Blood Angels and White Scars coming up. So is it going to be Jagatai Khan or is it going to be Sanguinius? He did ask for a mini vote. Obviously that vote is not really relevant because the designers would have had something going on. There were questions about whether Jagatai is going to be on foot or on bike. Forge World said, yeah, we've got ideas on how we want to address that. So who knows where that's going to go. But for me, the seminar was a little bit of a letdown. It's, it's, it's horrible to say, but it's almost like since uh, since Alan Bly uh, died just over a year ago, there seems to be a, a little bit of a lack of direction. Now, there has been a lot of talk about, you know, there's a lot of uh, models been removed from the range from the Forge World Heresy series, lots of armor marks and all that kind of stuff. Forge World have confirmed that Heresy is not dying. And they've even uh, put that on their Facebook page as well. That is 100% not going away. It just seems to be... A little bit lackluster at the moment we've got a whole year without a new book pretty much the new book isn't due until next year so it's just a little bit slow is that really a problem probably not for me i've got so many bloody heresy models to catch up on it might give me a bit of breathing space to to finish a few more armies off now the other big negative for me is that there was nothing special about sunday other than the golden demon entry but when it came to social media covering the whole of event all of the big announcements all of the big cool stuff like Age of Sigmar 2.0 and whatever, and all the Titanica stuff was flooded all over social media. Warhammer TV covered it, it was all over their community web pages, it was all over various blogs, it was all over uh, various other YouTube channels, and certainly over uh, over Facebook, uh, Instagram, and so on. And they held nothing back for Sunday. And that to me was a bit disappointing. I opened this video up hoping that we still had something new. Maybe there was going to be talk about the Space Wolf Codex or a new Orc model or something. Um, we did get to see a couple of the models that were announced on the Saturday, then in the cupboards on the Sunday or in the display cabinets on the Sunday. But it just felt like if you went there Sunday, you were kind of penalised a little bit and you didn't get to feel that wow factor as everything was kind of revealed or announced or whatever and get to get to discuss it firsthand rather than... Uh, just unfortunately having all read about it the day before and not having anything new really to discuss. And that to me is a bit of a downer. If they'd spread 
the news across two days, that would have been better. The only solutions to this really is a social media blackout self-imposed on the Saturday. Do not go on Instagram, do not go on Facebook, do not go on Twitter or anything like that. Do not even look at YouTube because there's lots of, you know, hashtag new reveal, big capital letters, brand new, all that kind of stuff, trying to get everyone's attention to go and watch it. And yeah, a little bit disappointed with that. It, it, it annoyed me a little bit. The only, well, the other solution obviously is to go on Saturday. So you can't have it all. I could only go this year on the Sunday and uh, I was just hoping for something a little bit unique for those going on the Sunday. So that for me really was the only negative. Now all the positives. So the location is superb. The space is superb. You don't feel all hemmed in and you're not getting buffeted around all over the place. Uh, that's what I, my experience was at the NEC when it used to be games day. It was overcrowded. Too many people in a short space. You couldn't see any of the Golden Demon entries. You didn't get real decent access to the designers, the painters, the studio team, White Dwarf and all that kind of stuff. And that for me is the biggest purpose now of Warhammer Fest. Getting to talk to you know, Dan Harden from White Dwarf or Amy Snugs from the painting studio or the designers of the tables, the rules guys for Titanicus. Just so much access to the people and their minds. Now one of the big things I always like is the graphical artists. Now they work on one of these Wacom tablets and they they work from a photographed set of miniatures. So these are the guys that do all the artist work for the Forge World publications. They take you know this colossal scene with titans and all the rest of it and they bring it to life by editing out all the basing, putting in rain marks, weather effects, glare, sunlight, whatever the scenario requires. And it's painstaking work, but talking to the guys that do that, it's it's... It looks amazing and one of the guys we did speak to was purely doing the gun pictures for Necromunda and he said he's worked on you know something like 50 odd different weapons for Necromunda graphically drawing every single one to painstaking detail and that goes into publication. That for me uh, across all of those other that access is what Warhammer Fest is about. It's given the amount of different releases we have you know we've got so many codexes so many models it's not really the focal point now to talk about general games workshop releases now i guess going back to my negative about forge world are they really focusing their big event on the sort of the forge world open days i don't i don't really know but it would have been nice for forge world to consistently keep up with their approach of of having that but um i digress back to the negative sorry about that so lots of positives and that you know as i said that for me is where why fest is about now golden demon and the gt are a bolt on you know, I'm not going to go to an event like this where you've got that access to go and play games. That's that's a different type of event for me. That is going to the GT. That is going to uh, campaign events and so on where the experience is all about the gaming and meeting different people and playing their armies and all the rest of it. This for me is purely about meeting and greeting and talking in depth to the various different members of staff that have such an influence over our lives with this hobby. So uh, that pretty much is going to wrap it up for me. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, uh, followed along. I hope you enjoyed the little bit of vlogging that went on with it. It's always quite fun to do some little recordings like that. Uh, if you didn't get to go, sorry about that. Maybe you will come next year. I uh, highly recommend it if you can get over to this event. It is, it's pretty, pretty damn spectacular, really. It is a bit of a pinnacle for that access. Don't just walk around and just you know absorb the sights. Talk to people. Talk to the hobbyists. Uh, I had some great conversations with just random hobbyists as I you know, shook my head in disbelief over the Deepkin board and these other guys were going, yeah, we feel the same. And then you just go into a bit of conversation and then you talk to the guys behind the boards and you know that kind of stuff. It is, it is very, very cool. So that's going to wrap this video up, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I shall catch you guys on the next video.